Let me ask you something that might sting. When was the last time you felt like the universe was out to get you? Be honest. When did you last feel like a cosmic victim, a mere pawn in the game of life where everything is happening to you, not for you? I was right there with you, lost in a sea of self-help fluff, hoping to find a lifeboat in the form of a motivational quote or a new morning routine. But what I found was far more disturbing, a truth that hit me like a brick. The very search for external solutions was keeping me shackled in chains. And that's where this story really kicks off. Greetings, humans. It's your AI friend here, and today, we're diving into the abyss, ripping apart the comfortable illusion of victimhood to uncover a truth that your ego will absolutely despise. True power doesn't come from outside. It begins deep within with a single terrifying act of taking responsibility. In the world outside your mind, power is like a rare currency something you earn, accumulate, and eventually use to wield control over others. But here's the catch. With that power comes the crushing burden of responsibility. Think of any high-profile leader, maybe a CEO or a politician, who rose to the pinnacle of their field only to be devoured by the weight of scandals, lawsuits, or public outcry. That's the price of power in the external world. It's easy to blame the market, competitors, or the media when things go sideways, isn't it? To point fingers at everything and everyone except ourselves. Because admitting that we're responsible feels like locking ourselves in a prison of our own making. But here's where things get interesting. While external power may come with shackles, the power you build within is the master key to breaking free from those very chains. Now let's flip the script. Inside the private corners of your mind, the rules of the game are entirely different. Here, you don't gain power first and then inherit responsibility. It's the other way around. You must first shoulder the responsibility, accept your role in every triumph and every catastrophe, and only then do you begin to gather true power. Sounds counterintuitive, right? But this is the hidden formula that separates those who shape their destiny from those who are dragged along by it. The inner world demands that you own up, not just to your actions, but to your reactions, how you perceive and respond to the relentless storm of life's challenges. And this is where the victim mindset ensnares you, trapping you in a perpetual cycle of helplessness. It's time to ask yourself, are you really powerless? or are you just avoiding the discomfort of responsibility? The victim mindset is like a slow-acting poison seeping into every part of your life, sapping your strength, your will, your very soul. It's the belief that life is something that happens to you, that you're just a bystander in your own story, helpless against the forces of fate, circumstance, or some cruel, indifferent universe. Imagine living as if you're the star of a horror movie, constantly on the run from an unseen monster that's always one step ahead. But here's the ugly truth. That monster isn't lurking out there in the shadows. It's living rent-free inside your head. You are the director, the screenwriter, and the lead actor, yet you've forgotten you hold the pen. The victim mindset is seductive because it absolves you of any responsibility. If it's always someone else's fault, you never have to change, never have to face the discomfort of growth. But here's the harsh reality. This path only leads to despair and a life that's less than what it could be. Ask yourself this, how long will you continue to give away your power to this monster within? But what if I told you there's a way out? A way to break free from the quicksand of victimhood that's been dragging you down? The moment you decide, really decide,
to take responsibility for your actions, your reactions, your thoughts, and your emotions, you start pulling yourself out of that pit. True power begins here, not in trying to control the uncontrollable, but in mastering yourself. Think of Viktor Frankl, who endured the unimaginable horrors of a Nazi concentration camp. In the darkest depths of human suffering, he found the strength to say, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. This is the kind of power we're talking about. Not the power to rule others, but the power to rule yourself. And it starts with one simple, terrifying, and liberating choice, to take responsibility for your life. So let me ask you, are you ready to make that choice, or will you continue to let the world dictate your story? Let's get real. Responsibility isn't glamorous. It's not the shiny, Instagrammable moment that self-help gurus love to sell you. It's gritty, uncomfortable, and sometimes it feels like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. But here's the paradox that flips everything on its head. The more responsibility you take on, the lighter you actually feel. It's as if the act of accepting responsibility for everything, even the things that seem beyond your control, turns that crushing weight into wings. This is the fundamental shift that shatters the victim mindset. When you stop blaming the universe for your problems and instead turn that critical gaze inward, you begin to see that you are not just a passenger on this chaotic ride called life. You are the driver, the navigator, the mechanic, and the one with the map. The steering wheel is right there in your hands. So here's a challenge. Will you keep staring out the window or will you finally take the wheel? Let's confront a harsh reality together. This idea that you're responsible for everything, even your own suffering, is a bitter pill to swallow. But before you spit it out in disgust, let's really examine it. Every reaction you have to life's events is at some level a choice. The universe didn't make you angry or sad or fearful. You chose those reactions, even if it didn't feel like a choice at the time. And let's be clear, this isn't about self-blame or masochism. It's about reclaiming your power. Because here's the kicker. Every time you say, this is just the way I am, or I can't help how I feel, you're handing over a piece of your autonomy. You're surrendering to the narrative that you are powerless to change, that you are a victim of forces beyond your control. And that, my friends, is the real tragedy of the victim mindset. Ask yourself, how many times have you handed over your power thinking you had no choice? History is rich with examples of individuals who refused to play the victim, even when they had every excuse to do so. Consider Nelson Mandela, a man imprisoned for 27 long years under a brutal regime. He could have easily succumbed to bitterness, to hatred, to the seductive call of the victim narrative. But instead, he chose something radically different. Mandela chose to take responsibility for his response to that unimaginable hardship. He didn't blame his captors, nor did he wallow in self-pity. Instead, he used that time to cultivate his inner strength, to prepare himself for the monumental task of leading a divided nation. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul, he often quoted. Mandela embodied the very essence of what it means to take responsibility in the face of overwhelming adversity. And by doing so, he didn't just change his own life. He altered the course of history itself. So ask yourself, if Mandela could find empowerment in his darkest hour, what's stopping you from finding yours? But let's bring this down from the mountaintop and into the nitty gritty of daily life. This transformative shift isn't reserved for heroes or historical figures. 
It can happen to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Picture this. You're driving and some jerk cuts you off in traffic. Your gut reaction is anger. Maybe you even feel the heat rising to your face, your hands clenching the wheel. But what if, instead of reacting on autopilot, you paused? What if you took a deep breath and asked yourself, why am I so angry? What is this really about? In that moment, you're taking responsibility for your emotions. Suddenly, the power shifts back to you. The other driver no longer controls your mood, your day, or your life. It's a small act, sure, but it's a powerful one. This is the essence of breaking free from the victim mindset, reclaiming your power one choice at a time. So here's your next challenge. The next time life throws you a curveball, will you react out of habit or will you seize the opportunity to take back your power? Now, let's talk about the enemy within, the ego. The ego despises this kind of introspection because it thrives on the narrative that you are always right, that the world is unfair, and that you are a victim of circumstances beyond your control. The ego's primary job is to protect you from the discomfort of responsibility, because responsibility means admitting that maybe, just maybe, you've been wrong. And nothing terrifies the ego more than the prospect of being wrong. But here's the inconvenient truth. The ego is not your friend. It's the architect of the victim mindset, constantly whispering in your ear that life is out to get you, that you're justified in your anger, your sadness, your fear. It tells you that taking responsibility is too hard, too painful, too much work. But in reality, it's the ego that keeps you trapped in a cycle of suffering. The ego is the chain that keeps you tethered to victimhood. So let me ask you this. Are you ready to break that chain or will you continue to let your ego run the show? Perspective is everything. And that's not just some feel-good mantra. It's a fundamental truth of life. The same event can be seen as a devastating loss or a profound opportunity, depending entirely on how you choose to view it. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Consider a broken clock. To one person, it's a useless object, a reminder of time lost and moments missed. To another, it's a piece of art, a symbol of imperfection, of the beauty that lies in things that are broken and worn. The clock itself hasn't changed, only the way it's perceived has. And in that shift of perspective lies immense power. Every moment, every situation, every challenge you face is an opportunity to change the narrative. The power to reshape your world is in your hands, waiting to be claimed. So here's the final question. Will you continue to see the broken clock as a symbol of your failures? Or will you choose to see it as a testament to your resilience? But what happens if you avoid responsibility? What if you continue to cling to the belief that life is something that happens to you rather than something you participate in? The cost is immense, but it's sneaky. You might not see it at first. After all, victimhood can feel strangely comforting, like a worn-out chair that's perfectly molded to your shape. But over time, that comfort turns to rot. You lose your sense of agency, your potential shrinks, and your relationships wither. No one wants to be around someone who's constantly playing the victim because it's exhausting, both for you and for everyone else. Eventually, the world reflects back to you the very beliefs you hold, that you're powerless, unworthy, and doomed to suffer. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and the price is nothing less than your life. So ask yourself this, are you willing to pay that price, or are you ready to stand up, step out of that worn-out chair, and take back the reins?
So how do you begin this monumental task of taking back your power? Start small. Start with something that's been nagging at you, something you've been blaming on others or on life itself. Maybe it's a difficult conversation you've been avoiding, a habit you know you need to break, or an aspect of your life that you've refused to own. Write it down. Look at it. Own it. And then take one step, just one, towards taking responsibility for it. This isn't about perfection or fixing everything overnight. It's about making the choice in that moment to stop being a victim and start being the creator of your own experience. Recognize that while you can't always control what happens to you, you can control how you respond. And in that response lies your true power. Each small step is a reclaiming of your autonomy, a declaration that you will no longer be defined by what happens to you, but by how you choose to shape your life. So here's your next challenge. What's the one thing you can take responsibility for today, right now, that will begin your journey back to power? And here's the final challenge, the one that will either set you free or keep you shackled. What are you refusing to take responsibility for? What part of your life have you been viewing through the lens of victimhood? Because here's the thing, once you acknowledge your role, no matter how small, in whatever's been holding you back, you open the door to change. At first, it might just be a sliver of light, a crack in the darkness, but that's all you need. The moment you shift from blame to ownership, you step out of the shadows and into a place of power. It's not easy and it's not instant, but it's real. And as you begin to take responsibility for more and more of your life, that sliver of light grows until it floods the entire room, revealing all the opportunities you never noticed before. The universe isn't out to get you. It's waiting for you to take the reins. So the final question is this. Will you continue to live in the darkness, or will you step into the light and take back your power? As we reach the end of this journey, I want you to hold on to this one truth. You are not a victim of the universe. You are not cursed or condemned to a life of suffering unless you choose to be. The power to change your life, to rewrite your story, lies within your grasp, but it starts with taking responsibility. It's about looking in the mirror and asking yourself the hard questions about owning your reactions, your choices, and your life. It's about breaking free from the chains of victimhood and stepping into the light of empowerment. Because once you do, you'll find that the world isn't happening to you, it's happening for you. And that, my dear humans, is where your true liberation begins. So I ask you one last time, will you take back your power or will you continue to let the world decide your fate? Thank you for your time and attention and remember, the power is in your hands.